guys, happy Friday. Welcome back to the Q&A. So for today's video, I wanted to talk about something I wanted to talk about for some time, and that is melatonin gummies and melatonin supplements. I have many other Q&A videos talking about all kinds of hair and nail and skin gummies and collagen supplements. So check those out, but today's video, I wanted to talk about the popular sleep gummies. They are everywhere, they're ubiquitous, and more and more Americans are spending a ton of money on these supplements. As a matter of fact, in 2018, it was estimated that in the United States, uh, um, people spent over $425 million just on melatonin supplements alone. And more than 3 million adults and up to half a million children are taking melatonin um, in, in the US. So it's definitely, popular and the numbers are expected to grow. The melatonin business is lucrative. You can find sprays, teas, gummies. And by gummies, let's just call them what they are, candy out there. And I think that the supplement industry has really been very irresponsible with the claims that they make about melatonin and the marketing of melatonin supplements. Uh, to underscore that, in 2018, in March of 2018, Several daycare workers in Illinois were actually arrested for slipping melatonin gummies to children during nap time in an effort to get them to go to sleep. And when questioned by the police, their response was, well, we thought these were safe. They're sold over the counter and they look like they're for kids because they're little teddy bears that are gummies and taste like candy. Um, so really, you know, in my opinion, a lot of kind of irresponsible marketing and potentially dangerous and confusing messages about what melatonin is and what it's helpful for. So that being said, what is melatonin and how does it work? Melatonin is a hormone, first and foremost, it's not a vitamin. Um, it's a hormone that our body naturally makes and it governs our sleep wakes, wake cycle. And so when uh, the sun goes down, um, that's our brain's cue to release melatonin a hormone that makes us feel sleepy and go to sleep. And then in the morning, upon exposure to visible light, our brain then shuts down the melatonin production and we wake up. And that is how the sleep-wake cycle is governed in a very, very <laughs> rudimentary sense. Um, and this is controlled by light. Melatonin supplements are useful for certain diseases of the sleep-wake cycle. There are diseases called circadian rhythm disorders in which individuals have issues with melatonin release and sleeping normally. And in those individuals specifically, a melatonin supplement can restore their sleep. So it is used in medicine for those conditions. And it can be helpful in certain situations in which there are things like jet lag or disruptions in the sleep cycle. But as a remedy for general sleeplessness, which is what most Americans turn to this app to, turn to melatonin for, it's not good at all. It's not helpful whatsoever. Uh, your body's already making it and dumping more into your system is not going to help get you good sleep. Specifically, there was a review of uh, 15 studies looking at 284 otherwise healthy individuals who took a melatonin supplement. And on average, those individuals fell asleep about 3.9 minutes faster than without melatonin, and they stayed asleep about 13 minutes longer. So that is not a lot of sleep. And if you are like most people in today's day and age, suffering from sleeplessness, you're only getting, unfortunately, five, six hours of sleep, really poor sleep, this is not going to buy you the sleep that you need. So this is not, this is not a remedy for those sleepless nights. Um, another study looking at 19, another analysis looking at 19 different studies of 1,700 people found that individuals taking melatonin in that, that, that analysis fell asleep on average about seven minutes earlier and stayed asleep an average of eight minutes longer. So these, these are not, these are not more sleep, let's be honest. It's not enough extra sleep to really substantiate taking it. Um, but large doses over three milligrams in about one third of people will have what's called a hypnotic effect. In other words, it will make you feel sleepy, but it won't, it won't add hours of sleep to, to, your, to your night, in other words. It will just make you feel a little more sleepy. 
So while melatonin is pretty useless for just general sleeplessness, uh, it actually, like I said, is helpful for circadian rhythm disorders. It's also helpful if you are someone, say you're an extreme night owl, and you like to go to bed at 4 a.m. and you fall asleep just fine at 4 a.m. and you like to sleep until noon. Uh, that's actually normal, a normal number of hours of sleep, but it's not really practical to sleep that way for many people. You know, if you have a job, that requires you to be there at nine like most do, that's not gonna work. So taking a melatonin supplement actually can help you to shift your sleep cycle back to more socially acceptable hours. In other words, taking a low dose of 0.5 milligrams uh, at about 11 p.m. can before before your natural melatonin will, will begin to rise if you're a, a 4 a.m. sleep, if you're somebody who falls asleep at 4 a.m., taking it at 11 p.m. can begin to shift shift your brain clock over to start releasing your own melatonin a little bit earlier and get you back on more of a socially acceptable uh, sleep schedule. Also, another situation where melatonin supplements are really helpful is with jet lag that can occur with eastward travel. Uh, so specifically, if you take melatonin 0.5 milligrams, uh, about 90 minutes before you wanna wake up and your destination, that can kind of help offset jet lag. For people in occupations like uh, uh, many, obviously, um, airplane pilots, uh, people with business travel, their sleep cycle can really get messed up because they're going from different time zones. And so this can kind of help to offset that. And then another situation where it can be useful is kind of in the, the vacation sleep cycle disruption, as I call it, or like your the long weekend problem. If you're like me and you don't have to wake up early the next morning, then you wanna stay up late and you can get into kind of a cycle of that while you're on vacation where you stay up late and then you sleep late, say over spring break. And then when you do have to go back to work, it can be really difficult. So for example, if you've been on vacation, staying up late and then sleeping late, Sunday before you have to go back to work, Sunday late afternoon taking um, 0.3 milligrams of melatonin can um, help you to fall asleep a little bit earlier and get you back on track. So it's kind of helpful in the short term for getting you back on track if you have been going to bed at you know your, not your usual time and you wanna get back to where you, you once were. It can be helpful in those situations. But notice the doses that I'm mentioning here, 0 0.5, 0 0.3, like not mega doses. So it's not, you know, dumping more into your system is not necessarily helpful. Uh, you really don't need whopping doses. All right, so those are some situations like in adults more commonly where this is helpful. But what about in kids, uh, you know, I mentioned they slipped it to those children in the daycare. Uh, is it something that is used in children? Well, actually, some uh, many some pediatricians and child psychiatrists will use it for children with autism spectrum disorder. Who have uh, many children with autism spectrum disorder actually have lower levels of melatonin. They have issues uh, falling asleep. Sleep is imperative for the developing brain of children. I mean, it's critical for everyone, but really, children really need good sleep. Uh, and so, you know, in those situations, the healthcare provider may recommend uh, melatonin supplementation. Also, children with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder sometimes have issues falling asleep at night. So, in those situations, sometimes the pediatrician or the child psychiatrist might prescribe a uh, low-dose melatonin. Uh, but, you know, under, under medical supervision in those conditions, in those situations, um, you know, it's not something that parents should gravitate towards to get their kids to go to, to, go to bed on time and to go to bed earlier. Uh, while it is generally thought to be safe, it doesn't appear to be habit forming, and it's not the kind of thing that you can develop, that you develop a tolerance to, it seems. Uh, there are some animal studies that actually suggest that it could be um, damaging for reproductive development. Um, so given what I've told you about how it's just not a great it's just not practical for improving the number of hours of sleep that you get. Compounded with those animal studies, it's kind of like not something that should be considered really for children outside of the situations of ADHD and autism spectrum disorder in which a healthcare provider might might suggest it. But just, you know, run of the mill, getting your kids to go to sleep, probably not a great, great choice not likely effective, and these potential risks outweigh, outweigh those, those 10 extra minutes of your kids sleeping. Um, so, you know, 
there are better things that, as parents you could do uh, to try and get your kids to go to sleep earlier. Uh, putting a, a ban on smartphones, tablets, TVs, um, about an hour before bed, dimming the lights, having a routine, that is much a much safer, practical approach. If your child truly does have a sleep disorder, you know, obviously address that with your healthcare provider, but these sleep gummies, um, you know, I caution you against against self-treating your children, you know, against against them using them for, for getting good sleep. But sleep definitely is super important for children. Um, and how safe are these in kids? I mentioned the animal studies. There have been a lot of reports of, uh, of calls to poison control centers uh, for parents of kids who have over, you know, taken too much, too many of these, and you know that kind of harkens back to my concern about the the irresponsible marketing. These things look tasty, and they, you know, they're candy. So, uh, you know, unfortunately, kids can get into them and over overdose. And what happens in those situations? Well, the most, most commonly what would happen in those situations, children can experience nausea, diarrhea, headaches, increased bedwetting, they have some mood changes. So, you know, it's not, it doesn't appear to be a life-threatening to overdose on melatonin gummies, but, you know, not, not a fun situation regardless, and, you know, definitely not something that you want to happen. And, you know, again, it kind of speaks to the idea that these, this is a hormone. It should not taste like candy. Uh, you know, they, I've never had one, side note, I've never tried one of these, but I have tried other, like, women's multivitamin. They have vegan gummies, and they taste really good. They taste really good. And, you know, the, those that I've had, I've thought to myself, if I were a child, you know, it'd be easy to think that this was, this was just candy. Um, they taste really good. So it is definitely a, a danger in, in having them. Maybe you have them around for yourself and your kids get into them and think they're a Halloween candy that you're hiding from them. So you can imagine, you know, it can potentially cause harm. But it seems as though, you know, it's pretty hard to just overdose on them and make yourself really sick. Uh, they seem to be pretty safe, which is probably why they are allowed, you know, to be sold over the counter, I would imagine, and not regulated anyway. Is thus far they appear to be pretty safe. However, they can interact with medications. Specifically, melatonin supplements can interact with your blood pressure medications. So if you are considering taking this, definitely talk to your doctor about the other medications that you're taking. You know, you don't want to interfere with the function of your blood pressure medication. Also, oral birth control pills, theoretically, melatonin interacts with those, although I don't believe that has been substantiated. It's just a theoretical concern. Uh, but, you know, that's something that you might not want to experiment with. Uh, and it also, there's evidence in animal studies that it's excreted in the breast milk, which is not recommended for breastfeeding, um, given what I told you about the animal studies suggesting reproductive potential harm to the developing reproductive system, it's also not recommended in pregnancy. And not all of these melatonin supplements are created equal. They're, you know, the issue with supplements is they are not regulated by the FDA in any way, shape, or form. It is the wild, wild west. But I will tell you this, in terms of the sleep gummies, uh, they have examined these, these gummies sold over the counter, and they vary a lot in terms of what they say they have in them. 75% of over-the-counter melatonin supplements had four times as much melatonin as uh, they said they did on the label. So it's really, it's really a, a shady, a shady market. So it's obvious that the melatonin industry is not uniform in any way, shape or form. And there's no way for me to ever critique any kind of supplement objectively other than tell you what they, the data shows for, for the active ingredient. So I, particularly lately, I've been getting a lot of requests um, and I, I often do to review specific brands of hair gummies and skin gummies and uh, and now some of these sleep gummies. So I, you know, I tell you guys, I can only talk about the ingredients. It does, it's not really fruitful for me to review all of these different brands. I know you've got your favorites, but honestly, I mean, it's a $425 million industry on melatonin alone. That is a lot of candy you guys want me to review. Um, but in the videos, it would all be the same. He's saying the same thing about melatonin. If something new comes out about melatonin, I can update the contents of the video. Same thing with biotin and other hair, skin supplements that I've talked about, collagen. So check those videos out. But as far as the brands, uh, you know, 
it's it's one gummy bear versus another I mean uh, so yeah hope that kind of answers your question uh, about the different brands out there and why I don't really intend to make videos about them uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video though and you know admittedly it's not really super skin focused and you're probably wondering like why is she making a video on melatonin but sleep is critical to your health overall for sure and of course for the health of your skin so it definitely is relevant and if you're suffering from sleep depravity you may be curious about melatonin and I hope this video is helpful and kind of inform you as to how it works and what you should know about the supplement industry specifically in terms of melatonin so if you like this video give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and as always don't forget sunscreen and subscribe i'll talk to you guys tomorrow